Hello guys, I am Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and today I am going to be talking to you about the dangers of using the scientific calculator in your math class. Okay, I should say by way of background that I'm a math teacher. I teach high school math between uh, grades 9 and 12 and I also teach engineering classes where students must understand math and must use math in order to accomplish the engineering projects and I've noticed a trend uh, in different schools that is very concerning and that trend is that there is a tendency these days to not teach students math but to teach students how to plug math problems into calculators and have calculators give them the answer. <clears throat> There's a lot of controversy on this, a lot of people disagree with me and the arguments that I get over and over is uh, kids have got to learn to use technology, it's technology, 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 it's all about technology to which I say at some point someone has to know how to do the math and to give a student to turn a student loose in math class with a graphing calculator you might as well just hand them the answer book and they can look the problem up in the answer book and they can write the answer down uh, from the answer book it's exactly the same thing you plug the problem into the calculator the calculator gives you the answer uh, one of the arguments is uh, well they'll have a calculator, use, let them use a calculator. <clears throat> the thing that I've got to warn you about, I'm kind of talking to two different groups. If you're a student that is in elementary school, middle school, or high school, I'm talking to you about why you shouldn't be using one of these. You should be using a book and you should be learning your math. <clears throat> and I'm also talking to parents because your student might be in a math class where, where they are being taught how to use a calculator as opposed to how to do math. Okay, And what I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you the danger. I'm going to show you that maybe if your middle schooler is being taught how to use the calculator, how that is going to jump up and bite your student your child and you when that child gets to high school. And if they go to a high school where they continue to work math problems on the calculator, this is what's going to happen. They're going to get bit when they go to college because <clears throat> what I'm seeing is more and more and more colleges in their math class, in their college algebra, in their pre-calculus, in their calculus, they are not allowing calculators in there. So anything that a student is taught on the calculator it's like a crutch. What's going to happen when they get to college and that calculator is taken away from them and they have never worked a real math problem, they are going to be sunk. <clears throat> and what I am seeing is I am seeing students crash and burn in college because they have grown dependent on the calculator and they don't know how to work a problem for real. So let me give you an example. Okay, let me turn the calculator on and let's just work a problem like back in the day and not that too long ago and hopefully in some places we were taught to work fractions. And so let's say we had the problem of uh, one third plus one-fifth, what is that equal to? Well, in the old days, what we were taught when we were taught math is to add fractions, we need a common denominator. And for this case, with a three and a five, the common denominator would be 15. So we would have a common denominator of 15, okay? And what did we have to multiply the three by to get 15? we had to multiply it by 5. So if we multiplied the denominator by 5, we need to multiply the numerator by 5. So we would have 5 times 1, there's our 1, plus what do we multiply the 5 by to get 15? 3. And so we multiply the numerator by the same thing, and then we get the answer of 8 over 15. Okay, and that is our answer. That is how <clears throat> we learn to do fractions. Well, if your child is being given one of these calculators in elementary school, middle school, or high school, let's see what the calculator does. The student can enter 1 divided by 3 plus <clears throat> 1 divided by 5 is equal to, boom, 8 over 15. 
<clears throat> so if they have access to this calculator, they don't learn this concept of a common denominator. <clears throat> they don't learn how to do fractions, okay? Maybe you're thinking, well, that's a good thing because most of us hated fractions, and therefore the idea that you no longer have to do fractions, you can let Mr. Calculator do your fractions for you, that's a good thing, right? Wrong. Okay, let's think when your student gets to Algebra 2, what is a problem that the student needs to be able to work in Algebra 2? In Algebra 2, they would need to work the problem, what is 1 over A plus 1 over B equal to? Okay, <clears throat> if they've never learned to work a fraction and now all of a sudden there's variables in there, they're in a world of hurt. So what do they go to? their friend Mr. Calculator. They, they go to Mr. Calculator and they say 1 divided by, and there's no A button. Okay, so the tool that they had learned to do fractions is no longer available to them. Well, let's go back and just think about, okay, if we really learn fraction 1 over 3 plus 1 over 5, common denominator here for the simple case it's just 5 times 3 is 15 and then what we do is we say we multiply the denominator by 5 or so we multiply the numerator by 5 we multiply this denominator by 3 so we multiply this numerator by 3 and we end up with 5 over 15 plus 3 over 15 is equal to 8 over 15 our answer okay so how do we do this here well we would kind of do the same thing what is the common denominator for A and B? Well, we can multiply those two together, and we can say the common denominator would be AB. Just like up here it was 15, here it's AB. Down here, again, it's AB. Okay. What did I multiply this denominator by to get AB? I multiplied it by B. Well, I've got to multiply the numerator by the same thing, so I'll put a B up here times my 1 plus this B, what did I multiply it by to get AB? I multiplied it by A, so what do I have to do in the numerator? Same thing, A times that 1, okay? So I have B over AB plus A over AB, and then I can combine those two terms because I have a common denominator, and I can see that 1 over A plus 1 over B is equal to B plus A over AB. Okay, now this would be something that you would probably do in Algebra 1. You might do it in Algebra 2 as well. But if you came up in middle school learning how to do fractions, learning how to do a common denominator, when you see this, the students get it like that. They just instantly get it. But if I have a student come into my math class that had never done common denominators and was simply taught on the calculator, they get to this point and it's a foreign concept because first of all, they've never worked a fraction with numbers where it sort of makes sense that if you had a third of a pie and a fifth of a pie, you, know, you could sort of make it make sense with numbers. They got to try to learn it where you're using variables and it's just hopeless. There is no way that they learn that. Well, how about this? When you get to Algebra 2, not only would you have to do something like that, what if you had a problem, which would be a typical Algebra 2 problem of 1 over x plus 2 plus 1 over x plus 3. What does that equal? Oh my goodness, now it's even getting more complicated. Well, if we knew how to do this, we would know how to do this, and we could sort of figure this out. What would the common denominator be? Again, we multiply those two denominators together, x plus 2, and then x plus 3 plus x plus 2 x plus 3. What did I multiply this denominator by? x plus 3. So I need to multiply the numerator by that. So I have x plus 3. And then down here, what did I multiply this denominator by? I multiplied that denominator by x plus 2. So I need to multiply the numerator by the same thing. Okay. Now that I have this common denominator, I can put them together. x plus 2, x plus 3. And then I combine those up there, x plus 3 plus x plus 2. And now I can combine like terms, and I have 2x plus 5, 2x plus 5 over 
x plus 2, x plus 3. Okay, that's the right answer. And do you see how easy it is to do these kind of complicated Algebra 2 problems if I can do the Algebra 1 problem, the fraction, and I can do that if I learned how to do fractions when I was in middle school. And so parents, I've just got to tell you, it's so important to make sure that your student is not being taught on a calculator. Similarly, I've kind of given the fraction example because it's one that we'll all relate to. There's also something that really, uh, in mathematics, a very, very important concept is the concept of matrices. And matrices are sort of groups of numbers. And so a matrix would be, you know, sort of rows and columns of numbers. And then complicated math problems you solve with matrices. And so by understanding how to do matrices, you can solve really, really complicated problems. But again, you can just simply enter the numbers in the calculator and it will do the matrix function for you, which is great to get you past that Algebra 2 homework. But then what happens when you get to college and the calculator is taken away from you? What happens when you get to a real math problem where you have variables in the matrix and not just numbers? You you are dead in the water. And I've got to tell you, folks, more and more schools are starting to use these calculators. And I think part of it is the teachers are under a lot of pressure with all of these standardized tests that your kid's going you know your kid's going to be tested at the end of the semester and so every crutch you can give him then you're more likely to get that student past that standardized test. You might get them past the standardized test. But what are you going to do when that student has to work a real problem and he doesn't know how to do math? All he knows how to do is put numbers in the calculator. Another argument that you might get is that, well, you're allowed to use these calculators on the ACT, so in high school we better start teaching to the ACT. Folks, it's not going to do you any good if your kid gets into college because he got through the ACT with a calculator. If he gets to college and that calculator is taken away, you got him into college and then he crashes and burns. I will tell you that the average score of my math students on the ACT is in the 90 percentile in the country. It's unusual for me to have a student that does not score 90 percentile on the ACT in mathematics, okay? And I do not teach the calculator and they do not need the calculator. Okay, well what is a calculator good for? Okay, there are things that a calculator is good for. <coughs> like I think it is really good that a lot of times I see that students will make a mistake on things like uh, 12 minus 16, okay? Addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. I'm not big on students needing to know how to do head math, like uh, uh, math where you add, subtract, multiply, and divide in your head. I'm not good at that. That's a good thing to use a calculator for, add, subtract, multiply, and divide. But it is not good to use the calculator for things that you should understand in math. That's things like fractions. <coughs> That's things like matrices. Another big problem with the calculator, one of the things that you need to know in order to be ready for college is how to solve two equations and two unknowns. How to solve three equations and three unknowns. You need to understand that process. Same thing with the calculator. You just type in the numbers and it gives you the answer and you don't even have a clue of conceptually what two equations and two unknowns mean. When you get to college, you're dead in the water. What happens when you run into a real problem where maybe you're dealing with 10 equations and 10 unknowns, <clears throat> can't solve it on the calculator, can't solve it by hand, you need to be able to program it into the computer. Well, to be able to program it into the computer, you have to understand the basics of how variable elimination works. You have to understand the concepts of substitution and you have to understand the concepts of elimination for you to solve these harder problems. And you do not understand that if you just type things into the calculator. So let me sum it, sum it up by saying this. If you are a student, learn the math. Math is great. Find you a math teacher that will teach you the math and love the math and be good in the math. And then when you get to college, man, you're going to love math. 
take it upon yourself to really learn the math. Don't lean on this as a crutch. If you're a parent, what I would warn you is these things are creeping into your schools and they're creeping into your math classes at earlier and earlier levels. If you see your student using a calculator or ask your student and if you find out that they are using the calculator to do things like fractions, like uh, ratios, like two equations and two unknowns, variable isolation, matrices, any of those things, if they are using the calculator, you need to speak to the teacher, you need to speak to the school. When you speak to the teacher, go in respectfully, always be respectful of the teacher, but try to understand what they're doing. Try to let them know your concerns, and if that doesn't work, find a different math teacher because your student will crash and burn in college if they are being taught to use a calculator uh, as a crutch. Okay, I hope you guys find this useful. I hope it makes sense what I'm saying. Uh, I was a practicing engineer for 20 years and I will say that in the 20 years I was an engineer, I never saw anybody solving a problem with a calculator. I saw people solving problems with pencil and paper, laying out the problem, getting it set up, and then if it was really complex to the point that you wouldn't do it on uh, pencil and paper, then programs would be written. You would go and use a computer and write a program to solve the math problem. But the reason that you could write a program to solve the math problem is because you understood the mathematics. If the calculator understands the math, and it's not one of the simple cases that can be plugged in here, you're not going to be able to write a program to do it. You're not going to be able to do it by hand. The calculator can't do it, and you're not going to be able to write a program because you never learned the math. Learn the math. Parents insist that your children learn the math. Parents insist that your school teaches children to learn the math. Okay, this is a very controversial thing that I'm talking about because uh, there's a feeling that technology is always the answer. I would really love to hear your comments down here. Is there anybody that agrees with me? Is there anyone that has run into this problem in college? Love to get your feedback about this. Uh, how do we teach math? How do we teach students to learn mathematics in an age where technology is at their fingertips. And I could, instead of this, I could say there's a lot of things, there's a lot of apps on smartphones that you're going to have the same problem with. So this is something, parents, that you need to be mindful of. I would love to hear your comments below. Again, this is Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com. Think about giving me a thumbs up. Think about subscribing to this channel. We will talk to you guys later.